To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Hello, friends. A very warm welcome to Global Reach Out. And thank you for staying with us on this series called Candle in the Dark. Killers One by One Ramlan and Lastri Read by Wong Fu Man Ramlan and Lastri were currently serving in the Philippines. They were married in 1999 and they have been serving together for seven years with several Christian organizations in different places. From 2006 until they decided to join SIM East Asia as cross-cultural gospel workers in the southern Philippines. Ramlan and Lestri were first assigned to Mindanao in a location named Baha City. It is a small city located in the heart of Mindanao province, about five to six hours' drive from the capital of a province, Davao City. Meanwhile, Davao City remains the busiest city in the southern Philippines. Arriving at Baha City, Ramlan and Lestri were initially at a loss as to how to start their ministry and who they could call friends. From first impression, they thought it would be easy to adjust to living in southern Philippines because there are Asian features and similarities between the languages would enable them to blend in easily. However, they were very wrong. They discovered many differences in language, cultural norms, and behavior. They knew that the best way to master the local language was to use it in public places. But they had to first confront their fears. The ministry was in a notoriously dangerous area where kidnappings, robberies, bomb threats, and murders were arrived. These encounters were common for the people living in Baha City. In the fourth year of their ministry, however, the people of Baha, Ramnan and Lastri met their first student contact who introduced them to the community. Her name was Yuni. She had two older sisters, Tuti and Tiwi. Yuni's father was Raja, and her mother, Ida, had worked overseas for many years. Yuni and her sisters helped Ramlan and Lestri to connect with the community. Ramlan and Lestri started by giving tuition to children at a religious school, then conducted baking and cooking classes for the students and the mothers. They also played games such as badminton with them. They were aware that Yuni's father had a drinking problem. He would get drunk daily as he sat drinking with his friends throughout the day. In his drunken state, Raja would start creating trouble. There were rumours that he would often send his henchmen to kill his enemies. And that's why both Ramlan and Lestri always kept a social distance from Yuni's father, especially in his drunken state. Ramlan and Lestri discovered that the student had never been to the city of Davao and were longing to visit it. So they decided to arrange a trip there on a public holiday. In total, eight girls registered for the trip. And Lestri told the girls, please ask your parents for permission. Otherwise, we will be held responsible for any mishaps. Ramlan and Lastri promised them that as long as the parents gave approval, they could tag along. To their amazement, the parents granted the permission. At around 9.30pm in the night before they left for Davao City, Ramlan and Lastri and the girls heard the front gate banging repeatedly. It was obvious that someone was angrily banging on it. And Lastri decided to check out the situation and found three policemen dressed in uniform besides two other men. One of the men was the father of the three girls 
who were living with Ramlan and Lastri for Tawau City, early the next morning. Meanwhile, Raman was in a room on the upper floor. He could hear, though faintly, Lastri's conversation with them. And suddenly, he heard the three girls crying hysterically. Ramlan immediately descended the stairs from his room and then invited the three men in for a talk with and invited the men in for a talk, but they refused. The girls had burst into tears because they were afraid from Ramlan and Lastri, as a sense that the policemen here were here to arrest them. Indeed, one of our police officers charged. We receive a report that these students are going to be taken out of our country. You are trafficking children. We are here to investigate. Ramlan and Lestri could hardly believe their ears. How was it possible? The man who lodged the police report was someone they knew for a long time. That man they knew very well. How much a couple has helped his daughters. That man was Raja, Yuni's father. For many years when his wife was working abroad, Raja had been living with his mistress. He had neglected his daughters and Ramlan and Lestri had stepped in to care for them. The girls frequent Ramlan and Lestri's home, confining with them in both good and bad times. They were like parents to the girls. It was almost normal for Lestri to go to their school to talk to the teachers when there was a problem concerning their studies. They attended the baking and cooking classes conducted by Lestri and engaged in creative art and craft sessions. They also brought their friends to Lastri's classes. In addition, Ramlan and Lastri had been providing financial assistance for their education. Surely all these would vouch that for their integrity and untarnished relationship with the girls. As if he's Raja, Ramlan and Lastri were at a loss. Raja's motive puzzled them, although Ramlan suspected that Raja was trying to blackmail them by manipulating the policemen. The couple was fully aware that Raja's henchman was known to be notoriously trigger-happy and always eager to do the evil bidding. The thought that this was the last night ran across their minds. And suddenly, the daughters yelled at their father, If you want to kill them, Kill us one by one first. And everyone present was shocked to hear them. And they say, and they wonder why they are behaving so disrespectfully to their father. Were behaving so disrespectfully to the father. The policeman insisted on checking Ramlan's and Lastri's passport to ensure that a proper documentation stayed in the country. The police flipped through the pages Taking note of the personal particulars, the couple told the police officers that Raja's allegations were false. Ramlan explained that they had been living in the country for over five years. He said, If needed, I can always call my friend's wife, who is the head of the immigration department, or I can call the barangay captain, who is a friend of mine. They can help clarify who we are. Ramlan also mentioned his connection with some Datok in the city. Datok in the local language refers to the title for chiefs, sovereign prince, and monarchs. It is conferred by the royalty and is still currently being used, especially in the parts of the Philippines. At that time, the police officers turned silent and appeared scared. And then Ramlan asked for the names, one at a time. They refused his request out of fear. Ramlan assured them, Don't worry, sirs. Don't be afraid of me. I just want to know your name so that we can be friends. How should I address you? The most senior policeman looked terrified, but eventually gave his name. He turned to Raja and rebuked him for being rude to Ramlan and Lestri. Ramlan heard the policeman telling Raja, they are not ordinary people. There is some datuk behind them, and we can all be in serious trouble. 
Then the police officers ordered Raja and his clenchmen to leave the house immediately. Before leaving, Raja said to Ramlan and Lestri, It's okay to bring my daughters to Davao city. They have my permission. Raja's daughter continued crying even after they have left. They failed to understand why the father had made false allegations against Ramlan and Lestri. The couple asked them, Why did he yell at the father? And they said to the father, was capable of reckless behavior. There was an occasion when he was almost shot his own wife with a gun. Upon hearing this, Ramlan and Lestri requested all the students, especially the three daughters, to pray for Raja. God has kept the couple safe from the wicked ones, and they used the occasion to testify to the girls what the Bible says that if we were to go to God, He would never leave nor forsake us. He promised to be with us always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20 Lastly, further affirm, those who believe in God need to believe that He is never too late and is always there in the time of need. After that, he led all the girls in prayer before retiring for the night. Some people in the local community came to know about the incident. They cautioned Ramlan and Lestri to be watchful every time they stepped out of the house because they had drawn the attention of some very wicked people. Ramlan and Lestri were aware they were engaged in spiritual warfare. As their ministry grew, the devil was stirring trouble. Although Ramlan and Lustri eventually moved to another place, they continue ministering to the Baha community whenever they come back for a visit. But they were careful to stay alert every time they returned to serve there. Regardless of dangers, the couple saw the ministry as a privilege of seeing God at work. They both held on to God's promise that he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 They had personally witnessed God's faithfulness through all the years and knew that no harm would come to them without God's permission and protection. We will close here today. Please stay tuned with Global Reach Out. And let's meet again next week. Have a great week ahead. Goodbye. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.